Welcome to Movie Shortens. Today we are going to explain a 2002 action horror film titled Resident Evil. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. The movie opens with a scientist locking some vials of a green chemical into a case. He takes the case with him and then throws a vial of blue chemical. As the particles escape into the air conditioning system, the labs go into lockdown. The situation is monitored by a camera. Dogs start to bark in their cages. The fire alarm sounds and the sprinklers go off. As the scientists try to cover their experiments, some people are trapped in a lift. The scientists are also trapped in the lab. The lift starts to fall, bringing the passengers down to the laboratory level. Halon gas is released to kill the virus, but it also suffocates many other people. The passengers open the lift doors and can see the bodies in the lab. A woman tries to escape through the gap, but the lift is operated and she is killed. Alice wakes, lying in the shower with the water running. She has a scar on her shoulder and remembers being knocked out by some gas. She gets dressed and then hears a noise above her. As she goes into the bedroom, she reads a note saying that today all her dreams become true. She opens a drawer containing weapons. The security cameras watch her as she leaves. Again, she hears a noise and turns on the lights. She opens the front door and calls out, Hello! A flock of birds fly away and there's a sudden gust of wind. A man grabs her inside and tells her to move as a team of commandos crash through the windows of the house. They handcuff the man despite his protest that he is a cop. Alice is told to give her a report, but she doesn't know what they're talking about. The cop is called Matthew, Matt Addison, but they can't find his records on their database. A secret door opens in the house and they enter the hive. The power is down, so one of them, Rain, goes to fix it. They all board a train, which drives away. Another one of the team, JD, opens a door on the train and an unconscious man falls through. Alice seems to recognize him as her husband, Spence, but he can't remember anything. The train arrives at its destination below Raccoon City. The cameras continue to monitor them. Alice asks the leader, called One, what is going on? He reveals that they all, including her, work for the Umbrella Corporation. Alice and Spence guard the emergency entrance to the Hive. He also reveals that their marriage is not real. The Hive is a top secret research facility owned and operated by the Umbrella Corporation. Their memory loss is a side effect of the gas used as a defense mechanism by the computer. Matt asks if they were attacked, but one says that it's a little more complicated than that. Rain reports that they have breached the hive. They enter and switch on the lights. The halon gas has dissipated and they take the stairs down. It is reported that the Red Queen, the state of the art artificial intelligence that controls the hive, knows that they are there. One reveals that five hours ago, Red Queen sealed the hive and killed everybody down there. They don't know why she did it, but they are there to shut her down. Alice asks Spence if he remembers anything, but he says no. She says the same, although she is starting to remember some things. The team continues and arrives in a room marked Dining Room on the map, although it is not a dining room. Matt suggests that there might be secrets that they don't know about. One instructs JD and Rain to stay behind with Matt. As the others move on, Alice looks through a hatch in the tank and can see some kind of organism feeding from the pipes. One instructs her to keep moving. Another commando named Kaplan is working on a computer to get access to the control room, but the Red Queen's defense are making things difficult for him. One continues onwards through a corridor and puts a transmitter onto a door lock. Kaplan uses it to crack the access code and they gain entry. The remaining commandos bring in some equipment that Kaplan says will deliver a massive electrical charge and force a reboot, enabling them to shut the queen down. Suddenly, a dormant defense mechanism activates and traps one and his team in the corridor. A laser slides through the room and slices them all into pieces. Kaplan manages to deactivate those defenses, and so he and Alice go forward. The door shuts behind them. They begin to install the equipment as the Red Queen presents a holographic representation of herself telling them to leave. She warns that they will all die down here. The machinery closes down primary power and the door locks are all deactivated. He removes the motherboard to prevent her rebooting. Back at the dining room, Rain leaves to investigate as the others are taking too long. She calls JD as she finds a survivor, but the survivor bites her hand. It is a zombie, so they shoot at it. The others hear the noise and return, but the zombie has gone, leaving a pool of blood on the floor. Matt realizes that the blood has coagulated, which should only happen once the body has died. Spence says that they should leave, but Rain says that they're not going to till the rest of the team get there. Kaplan reveals that no one else is coming. More zombies advance on him. The team shoots to keep them away, 
Alice tells them to mine the tanks behind them, but the bullets cause one to explode, throwing everything clear. As Alice lays there, she remembers telling someone that she can help them to get the virus, as she has a full clearance. Matt manages to release his cuffs. Kaplan yells the access code to JD to open a door, but as it opens, more zombies are on the other side who drag him through. Rain tries to help him, but it is no use, and she is dragged back by the others. A creature escapes from the tanks. They now realize that by cutting the power, they release the zombies. Alice is exploring and finds the dog cages with broken grills. As she turns, she sees some zombie dogs advancing. She escapes into a room but is attacked by another zombie waiting inside. She knocks it unconscious and takes his gun, just as a dog jumps through the window. As she runs back outside, there are more dogs waiting. She shoots them all and then kicks another one away. She seems quite surprised at her skills. Matt is searching through offices. As he reads a file, a zombie bangs on the glass. Another zombie stumbles in. He recognizes her as his sister, Lisa. As she attacks him, Alice hits her on the head. Alice also recognizes her as the person she told that she could get the virus. Matt explains that the Umbrella Corporation thinks that they are above the law. He is part of a large group that work against them. He is not really a cop, and his sister was undercover to help expose the illegal genetic and viral work that they were doing. Matt didn't know that Alice was the contact. He thinks that maybe the contact set her up. He says that the virus would be worth a lot on the open market. As they join the others in the control room, they are pursued by more zombies. Spence believes that someone will come and rescue them when they don't hear back from them, but Rain explains that if they're not out within the next hour, then the doors will be sealed shut forever to contain the contamination. Alice decides to go back to reactivate the Red Queen as she will be able to tell them the way out. They ask what is happening. She explains that the T-virus allows the body to continue working after death, which has huge military potential. She tells them that the zombies are motivated by the need to feed and can most effectively be killed by severing the top of the spinal column. She tells them that the zombies are motivated by the need to feed and can most effectively be killed by severing the top of the spinal column or causing severe brain trauma. She goes on to say that everyone was killed down there because the virus was released into the air. It mutates to be transmissible by air, liquid or blood, making it almost impossible to kill. She couldn't allow it to escape from the hive, so she took the steps. She cannot allow anyone infected to leave. Alice explains to her that if she refuses to cooperate, then they will disable her main drive circuit breaker. They try to escape through the utility tunnels. The zombies are following them. Alice fights them off as the others climb onto the overhead pipes. Spence is bitten on the leg and Rain is bitten again. She encounters zombie JD and blows his head off. Afterwards, from up above, Rain drips her blood down onto the baying zombies below. Kaplan says that she was right. They're all gonna die down here. As they continue along the pipes, the weight brings the pipes down. Kaplan falls into the zombies below. Rain can't focus, so cannot shoot at them to help him. Alice does it instead, and Kaplan climbs free. He tells them all to go without him. The others believe that he shoots himself, but he climbs away instead. The creature is advancing on the survivors. Alice suddenly remembers blue for the virus, green for the antivirus. There's a cure. She tells Rain that she will be okay. Alice reveals to Matt that she was his sister's contact. She can't remember whether she betrayed her or not. She goes to find the antivirus, but it's gone. Spence suddenly starts to remember that he was the one who released the virus and stole the antivirus. He grabs a gun and tells Alice that they can still leave together and have everything they ever wanted. Matt leaps across to confront Spence, but he aims a gun at him. Alice tells Spence that she was working against them. He reveals that the antivirus is on the train, near to where they found them. As he talks, a zombie sneaks up behind him and bites him in the neck. He fights it off and then locks them in the control room. Spence retrieves the antivirus from the train, but as he is about to inject it into himself, the creature attacks him. The queen explains that it was an early experiment when the T-virus was injected to the living tissue. Now that it is fed on fresh DNA, it will mutate, becoming stronger and faster. They have 20 minutes remaining. The queen offers the door access code for the infected Rain's life. She cannot risk Rain getting free. The creature crashes into the glass as the queen orders them to kill her. Alice smashes the speaker. Suddenly, all the power goes off and the door opens. Kaplan is on the other side. He disabled her main drive circuit breaker as she wouldn't open the door. The creature breaks through the glass as they escape through the door. 
closing it behind them. They return to the train. Alice retrieves the antivirus and Spence lurches towards her. She kills him with an axe. Kaplan starts the train and Rain is injected with the antivirus. Kaplan is also injected. There are eight minutes remaining. The creature suddenly slices through the train, cutting Matt's shoulder in the process and abducts Kaplan. Matt is knocked down, so Alice shoots it in the head to no effect. Matt knocks down some pipes and Alice uses one to stick through the creature's tongue, attaching it to the floor. She yells to open the door, but as Matt turns around, Rain has transformed into a zombie. They struggle, but Matt shoots her in the head. He opens the door, which drags the creatures under the train and destroys it. Matt and Alice arrive back at the mansion, just in time for the doors to close shut behind them. Alice opines that she failed all of them. Suddenly, Matt starts to convulse as the cut on his arm begins to make him mutate. Scientists crash through the doors and take him as Alice tries to fight them off. One of the scientists says that he wants him in the Nemesis program. Matt is taken away and Alice is taken away to quarantine. As she blacks out, she hears them say that they will reopen the hive to find out what exactly happened down there. Sometime later, Alice regains consciousness in a lab. She demands to be let out. A shadowy figure passes behind some mirrored glass. She manages to escape from the lab, but everywhere seems to be abandoned. As she leaves Raccoon City Hospital, there appears to have been a zombie apocalypse. She grabs a rifle. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.